Hello, this is set five of nine hours, nine person, nine doors. And last time things got really dark really quickly with the talk of someone, or at least three people, is going to have to stay behind and to get through this door we are going to have to leave... Oh, I knew that was going to happen. We're going to have to leave one person behind and then that dancer woman is trying to figure out, oh, we should we should have a vote to say who gets uh, left behind, but oh, I just want to leave her behind because she's really slimy now and she's just in it to save herself, but I want to try to save everyone, but what she said about, you know, only five people are allowed through the last door and if there's eight of them, obviously three of them are going to have to stay behind and uh, just, uh, let's just see what happens, shall we? <laughs> From somewhere deep in the ship, Junpei suddenly heard the screeching of metal on metal. It was almost as if the ship were screaming. Would it really hold until their time limit was up? Already D-Deck was flooded. In the sudden silence, only the sound was the sad metal wail of the ship. Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who spoke first. Ah, oh, this is the one. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? We're wasting time. Why don't we hurry it up? As if a spell had broke, been broken, the others all began to talk at once. God, they do that all the time. <laughs> You're right. We should get going. That's all we can do right now. Seven. Seriously. Honestly, I was getting kind of sick of listening to you guys all talk. You too, Santa? I, I have to find my brother. He's not through the door. How could he be through the door unless Zero actually let him? Well, wait, all of you. Let's just calm down and think about this. There has to be a way to get everyone out. There has to be. R right, Jumpy? Say something. Y yeah, let's think. There's gotta be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine. Forget about it. I'll figure it out on my own. Why is everyone looking at me? It's like I'm like the leader guy or something. She spun around and ran away. Uh, ran toward Ace. <coughs> He had slumped down next to the bed when June grabbed his arm and pulled. Come on, Ace, please stand up. You can't give up yet. We just have to sit down together and think about this. We'll figure out a way that we can all get out of here. Then it happened. Eh? Ace fell forward. He slumped over onto the wooden floor, his body folded in half like, the, like a boxer out cold. Ace! June cried out and dropped to her knees beside him. She put her arm around his neck and did the best to lift him up. What happened, Ace? Say something. She shook him frantically. His eyes fluttered open. I'm alright. His voice was weak and slightly slurred. How are you? Fine? This... He held out his left arm and slowly opened his hand. It was a syringe and a small vial. The vial was empty. It had only recently been emptied. A few drops clung to the sides. Was he like a diabetic or something? There's a label taped to the side of the container. It read, Soporil Beta. Soporil Beta. Junpei had no idea what it meant or what kind of medicine it might be. Did, did you use this? Yes. It's just anesthetic. I'll be fine. Anesthetic? I found it earlier, while we were searching the hospital rooms. I thought it might be useful later. Ha. Huh. I didn't think I'd be using it on myself. Why did you do this? Didn't I tell you? I'd like to take a nap. I really am very tired. Junpei knew that wasn't the reason why I'd done it. Oh, he hasn't done it because he's like, I want to stay behind, so you guys just go on ahead, like forcing them to leave mine. Ace had injected himself with anaesthetic to forestall Junpei and Jun's attempts to bring him along. If he couldn't move, there was nothing they could do. He dejected himself so that they would be forced to leave him behind. Aww, I like Ace, even though we don't really know much about him yet. Ace, hmm? Is there something you want to say? I'd just like to sleep a little. Could you keep it down? No! No, don't Ace. Don't fall asleep. Ah, uh, you feel warm. 
so comfortable. I think I'll have a nice dream. <coughs> Ace's eyelids dropped further and further. Almost as though he were dying. Ace? Ace! She shook his shoulder again and again, but this time he didn't respond. Only the gentle rising and falling of his chest told them that he was alive. Junpei was relieved to see that he was, in fact, still breathing. That's good. He lifted Ace up off the floor and laid him on the bed he'd been leaning against. When Junpei turned around, Lotus gave him a look of pity. Well, we really don't have a choice now. We can't let his sacrifice go to waste, right? She wasn't feeling any remorse. Junpei was sure of that. Still, he had no grounds upon which to oppose her. It felt wrong, but he had to agree. Then suddenly, Santa spoke. Yeah, but we're not done choosing yet, are we? Huh? What do you mean? Well, we haven't decided who's going in what door. Ah, yes, that's true. Well, enough of this screwing around. Let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? I, um, I want door number eight. It's the same number as my bracelet number. Got it. You're eight. You're next, seven. Which one do you want? I'll take seven. I can't get along with that old lady. What? What did you just say? Her face distorted by rage, Lotus took a step towards Seven. He threw up his hands and made a face like a child caught with his hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> Ugh. You're gonna get it next time. I wouldn't put it past her that she's actually capable of doing that. She shot him a glare that would have melted steel and then turned and stalked off. Alright, who's next? Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want? At last. Junpei's mind was already made up. Uh, I kind of want door 8 just to keep an eye on her. But I guess she isn't going to do much harm to anyone. I mean, I don't think it was her that locked us in the freezer, but she didn't really seem to do anything to care about getting us out. Uh, but then it could be her because we, she needs us and, uh, okay. So door 8 would be going with her, door 7 would be going with 7. That's all we really know so far. Door 3, no one's decided to go through door 3 yet. Okay, let's just say... Door... 8. I... I think I'm gonna go with door 8. Okay, eight it is. Yeah. Alright then, that means June's gotta go through seven. What? Why? What? Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, and finally began to explain. If the six of us are gonna keep going without leaving anyone behind, there's only three ways we can do it. Plan A. Go through seven with three, five, eight, and go through eight with four, six, seven. Plan B. Go through seven with four, five, seven, and go through eight with three six eight. Plan C. Go through seven with three six seven, and go through eight with five four five eight. 